أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على المصطفى محمد وعلى أهل بيته الطيبين الطاهرين اللهم صل على محمد وآل محمد وعجل فرجهم واللعنة الدائمة على أعدائهم أجمعين إلى قيام يوم الدين رب شح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل العقدة من لساني يفقه قولي اللهم كن لوليك الحجة بن الحسن صلواتك عليه وعلى آبائه في هذه الساعة وفي كل ساعة وليا وحافظا وقائدا وناصرا ودليلا وعينا حتى تسكنه أرضك طوعا وتمتعه فيها طويلا برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين <تصفيق> In our last lesson, we were still looking at the words that Adam السلام, used in order to repent. And we were shedding light on more traditions in Shia and Sunni sources regarding this topic. So we shed light on a few traditions in Shia sources and also a few traditions in Sunni sources, namely in the book uh, tafsir al durr al manthur al durr al manthur for jalal al din al sayuti and we saw that according to shia and sunni traditions adam alayhi salam used the names of ahlul bayt alayhi salam muhammad ali fatima hasan and husayn salawatullahi alayhim in order to repent we also mentioned, if you remember that, when Sayuti mentions traditions in his book, Ad-Durr al-Manthur, um, he tells you that other scholars, he tells you which scholar narrated this tradition. And sometimes he mentions five or six or seven names uh, of scholars who mention the same tradition. Which means that referring to Ad-Dur al-Manthur is important. When we look at Ad-Dur al-Manthur, we're looking at a book that provides us with, you know, a good amount of information that Sunni scholars in general, uh, that Sunni scholars in general uh, presented or and or accepted. طيب. Then we mentioned the Gospel of Barnabas. If you remember. We said that in that gospel, uh, Rasulullah Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi is mentioned by name. And he's mentioned to be the Messiah, meaning the Savior and the Messenger of Allah. We read a tradition regarding Adam alayhi salam, which basically said that Adam sallallahu alayhi saw the name of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi. Where did he see it? The tradition or the text in uh, the gospel of Barnabas says the following it says whereupon Adam turning him round saw written above the gate there is only one God and Muhammad is messenger of God there's only one God and Muhammad is messenger of God when we read that passage which is found in chapter 41 of the gospel of Barnabas uh, we realize that even in that gospel, even according to the gospel of Barnabas, um, the issue of Adam was related to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam. So it's not only Shia and Sunni traditions which tell you that Adam's issue alayhi salam was related to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alihi. No, even in the gospel of Barnabas, we see a passage uh, confirming that point. Today, inshallah, we want to look at another passage in the Gospel of Barnabas, speaking about Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi. This doesn't have to do with Adam's topic specifically, but since we mentioned that Gospel, uh, I'd like to share this passage with you. Then we'll look at <clears throat> a tradition by Imam al-Ridha sallallahu alayhi regarding the Gospels and why Christians today have four Gospels. Then we'll move on to a new verse, if we have enough time. We'll move on to a new verse regarding Adam, Adam's story, salamullahi alayhi. We still have maybe 
you know, one or two or three verses to analyze regarding Adam's story. And then, inshallah, we'll start with a new topic in these Quran classes. So the passage I want to share with you is found in chapter 97. Chapter 97. And it mentions basically words that Isa alayhi salam said. Words that Jesus Christ said alayhi salam. So Barnabas says, Jesus answered, the name of the Messiah is admirable. For God himself gave, gave him the name when he had created his soul and placed it in a celestial splendor. So Isa is speaking about the Prophet, Prophet Muhammad, and he's calling him the Messiah, which might be a bit weird for some people. But the literal meaning of Messiah is what? The literal meaning of Messiah is the Savior, someone who saves mankind. And Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi was a Savior. He was a Savior to mankind. Um, similarly, Isa alayhi salam was a savior during his time. Musa was a savior during his time, so on and so forth. So it's not weird in reality to see Isa alayhi salam calling Rasulullah the Messiah. Secondly, he says that God himself gave him his name. God himself gave Rasulullah the name Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi, which is also confirmed in our traditions. Thirdly, he says, and placed it in a celestial splendor, which indicates that Allah Azza wa Jal wrote the name of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi somewhere in the skies or on the throne of God Azza wa Jal, and that's also what our traditions confirm. So when you read the Gospel of Barnabas, you realize that there are there's an, uh, a significant amount of passages uh, that coincide perfectly with our traditions, meaning the traditions of Ahlul Bayt, salam. Not to say, of course, that everything Barnabas mentions is correct. No, there are some, you know, passages that we don't uh, accept because they contradict what the Quran said or what Ahlul Bayt said, salam. But then again, there are, you know, passages out there in his gospel that coincide perfectly with the Quran al karim or and or the narrations of Ahlul Bayt, alayhim salam. So he says, For God himself gave him the name when he had created his soul and placed it in a celestial splendor. God said, Wait, Muhammad. For thy sake I will to create paradise, the world, and a great multitude of creatures. Does this ring a bell? It should. This should remind you of Hadith al-Kisa and what other Ahadith also mentioned. Our traditions mention that had it not been for Ahlul Bayt, Allah Ta'ala wouldn't have created anything. He wouldn't have created the sky, nor the earth, nor the moon, nor the sun, nor the galaxies, nor me, nor you, nor Adam, nor Eve, alayhim as-salam, alayhim as-salam. So no one would have been created had it not been for Ahlul Bayt, salam Allah alayhim. Allah Ta'ala created the whole universe for their sake. And here, the Gospel of Barnabas is confirming this in regards to who? To Rasulullah specifically, sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi. Whereof I make thee a present in so much that whosoever shall bless thee shall be blessed. That whoso shall bless thee shall be blessed and whoso shall curse thee shall be accursed. So Allah Ta'ala is telling the Prophet that, that I'm going to make you a present to mankind. When I send you, you will be my gift that is sent to mankind. Such that whoever blesses you will be blessed by God Azza wa Jal. But then again, the person who curses you, O Muhammad, he will be cursed by God Azza wa Jal. Quran says what on this regard? وَمَا أَرْسَلْنَاكَ إِلَّا رَحْمَةً لِلْعَالَمِينَ Allah says that he only sent the Prophet as a mercy to the world. 
Then again, we have plenty of traditions speaking about salawat. When you recite salawat, when you ask Allah Ta'ala to send his blessings upon Muhammad and his progeny, alayhim salam, for example, you say, Allahumma salli ala Muhammadin wa ali Muhammad. What happens? Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Ta'ala sends blessings upon you. For example, we have one tradition saying that he, uh, whosoever performs salawat once, Allah Azza wa Jal will bless him ten times. And he who performs salawat ten times, Allah will bless him a hundred times. And he who performs salawat a hundred times, Allah will bless him a thousand times. Jayid. So when you do salawat, when you say, for example, Allahumma salli ala Muhammadin wa ali Muhammad, Allah Ta'ala blesses you multiple times. Then God tells him, when I shall send thee into the world, I shall send thee as my messenger of salvation. And thy world shall be true in so much that heaven and earth shall fail, but thy faith shall never fail. So basically what the passage is saying here is that the message of Rasulullah will be so true and so strong that it will continue to last, it will continue to exist even after the destruction or the annihilation of the heaven, meaning the skies and the earth. <clears throat> Here Isa says, Muhammad is his blessed name. Then the crowd lifted up their voices saying, O God, Send us thy messenger, O Muhammad, come quickly for the salvation of the world. So when they heard Isa alayhi salam saying this, they responded in a good manner. And they said, Ya Muhammad, come quickly, <clears throat> because the world is in need of you. Again, this is one passage in the Gospel of Barnabas. We said last week, if you remember, that this Gospel existed before the advent of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi. Such that when you do a bit of research on this gospel, you find that in year 492, there was a pope called Gelasius who banned this gospel. He told the Christians that it was forbidden upon them to read this specific book. 492, Rasulullah had not come to this world yet in year 492. For the Prophet came, according to people, 600 years after Isa alayhi salam. And according to Ahl al-Bayt, 500 years after Isa alayhi salam. In both cases, whether we accept this opinion or that opinion, um, we'll come to the conclusion that Rasulullah was not on this earth yet. He wasn't in this world yet. Even then, the Gospel of Barnabas was mentioning who? Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi by name. So if anything, these passages actually uh, strengthen the gospel of Barnabas and show us, by us I mean people in general, not only Muslims, that uh, there is, you know, an amount of passages. The least we can say is there is an amount of passages in the gospel of Barnabas that are true, that are true and correct and that haven't been altered. Since we're mentioning the Gospel of Barnabas, let's read a tradition by Imam Rida alayhi salam that sheds light on the Bible in general and explains why today Christians have four Bibles, meaning four Gospels. As you may know, uh, the, the Gospels that the Christians accept today are the Gospel of John, Matthew, Mark, and Luke. Allah Ta'ala descended one book upon Isa alayhi salam, one Injil, one Bible. So how did, it, how did it become four Gospels? When you have four Gospels, this means there's <clears throat> there are contradictions or differences at least between these Gospels. There are differences. For if they were exactly the same, why would they be four? They'd only be one. 
Correct? So the presence of four Gospels indicates that there are differences amongst the Gospels. And when you read them, you'll see that, yes, there are contradictions or differences. So the question is, what led uh, the Christians to having four Gospels or let's say four Bibles? When the Bible was one book brought down upon Isa, السلام, Isa says, according to the Holy Quran, قَالَ إِنِّي عَبْدُ اللَّهِ This was the first word he said when he defended Mary's purity, alayhi salam. He said, I am the slave of Allah. أَتَانِي الْكِتَابِ He has given me the book. وَجَعَلَنِي نَبِيَّ And he has made me a prophet. So it was one book. What made it or turned it into four books? Let's read the uh, narration of Imam Rida alayhi salam. This narration, by the way, is part of the lengthy debate Imam Rida alayhi salam had with the um, Jewish, Christian, uh, Jewish and Christian scholars, and with other scholars from other faith as well, uh, faiths as well. If you remember, we mentioned that Imam Rida alayhi salam had a debate with multiple scholars from different religions in the presence of Al Ma'mun. And we read part of that debate in the uh, biography of the Prophet class, sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi. We saw what Imam Rida said, alayhi salam, to the Jewish scholar regarding miracles and regarding tawatu. So today we want to read a passage from that lengthy debate regarding the Bible. The tradition says, again, you can find it in the book, uh, عيون أخبار الرضا عليه السلام for Shaykh al-Saduq رحمه الله قال الرضا عليه السلام يا جاثليق ألا تخبرني عن الإنجيل الأول حين افتقدتموه عندما وجدتموه ومن وضع لكم هذا الإنجيل The Imam asked him a question He told him O جاثليق uh, can you inform me about the first Bible? What happened when you lost it? And where did you find it? With who did you find it? And who wrote the current Bible for you? Meaning, who wrote the four Gospels that the Christians believe in? During Imam Muridullah's time, Salamullah Alayhi, the Christians, uh, the Christians had the four Bibles, or the four Gospels. The Gospel of John, Luke, Mark, and Matthew. So this is the Imam's question, alayhi salam. Al-Jathliq, being a Christian scholar, said what? He said, مَفْتَقَدْنَا الْإِنْجِيلِ إِلَّا يَوْمًا وَاحِدًا حَتَّى وَجَدْنَاهُ غَضًّا طَرِيًّا He said, we only lost the Bible for one day. Meaning throughout Christian history, from the days of Isa alayhi salam and up until today, meaning the days of Imam Rida salam I'm speaking on behalf of Al-Jathliq, from the days of Isa until today, O Ali al-Rida, we only lost the Bible for a day. And then we found it, alhamdulillah, and it was in a good condition. We found it, it was still soft, it was in a good condition. Then what happened? He says, فَأَخْرَجَهُ إِلَيْنَا يُوحَنَّا وَمَتَّى At that point, John and Matthew, they came forth and uh, having found the Bible, they presented the Bible to who? To the average Christian. So they presented the Bible to the Christians in general. فَقَالَ لَهُ الرِّضَى عَلَيْهِ السَّلَامِ مَا أَقَلَّ مَعْرِفَتَكَ بِسُنَنِ الْإِنْجِيلِ وَعُلَمَائِهِ Imam Rida said, السلام, he said, your knowledge is poor regarding the history of the Bible and its scholars. So the Imam السلام, failed to agree with Al-Jathliq on that answer. He's telling him, your answer is incorrect. That's not what happened. So what happened? The Imam said, he said, sorry, before we look at what happened, he says, فَإِن كَانَ 
هذا كما تزعم فلما اختلفتم في الانجيل he told them if if that actually happened as in you only lost the bible for a day and then you found it and Matthew and uh, John came forth and presented the Bible to the general uh, to the, the general public. Then why is it that you differ today on the Bible? As in you have different versions of the Bible. وإنما وقع الاختلاف في هذا الإنجيل الذي في أياديكم اليوم فلو كان على العهد الأول لم تختلفوا فيه. He told him that basically today you Christians uh, differ on what is the actual Bible. As in when you have four different Bibles or Gospels, the presence of four different Bibles or Gospels is a proof that they're unsure which one is the authentic or original Gospel that was brought down upon Isa alayhi salam. They're unsure about this. So the Imam tells him that if you had preserved the original Bible, if you had preserved it, and that Bible was passed down from generation to generation, then today you wouldn't have different Bibles or Gospels. Then he said, وَلَكِنِّي مُفِيدُكَ علم ذلك. However, I will tell you what happened. اعلم أنه لما افتقد الإنجيل الأول اجتمعت النصارى إلى علمائهم. He tells him know that when the first Bible was lost, the Christians came to their scholars. فقالوا لهم and they said to their scholars the following words. Let me just copy and paste the tradition for you so we can read it together. فقالوا لهم they said to their scholars قتل عيسى بن مريم عليه السلام وافتقدنا الإنجيل وأنتم العلماء فما عندكم they said عيسى has been killed and we've lost the Bible you are our scholars so what should we do what should we do at this moment here we need to make a comment regarding their first word. They say, Isa has been killed. We need to understand that some people thought that Isa had been killed, that Isa was crucified. But, but the reality is what? As the Quran Karim says, وَمَا قَتَلُوهُ They didn't kill him. What happened? لَكِنْ شُبِّهَ لَهُمْ The person who was crucified was a person whom they thought was Isa. He resembled Isa, but it wasn't him. The real Isa, the real Jesus, عليه, was saved by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and was lifted to the skies. And he shall return. When Sahib al-Zaman, Allah ta'ala, farajah, reappears in order to support Sahib al-Zaman, salamullahi alayhi. So he wasn't killed, nor was he crucified. Who was the person on the cross? According to a tradition by Imam Ridha, alayhi, if you remember, I mentioned this to you before. It was a young man who voluntarily, um, who basically voluntarily um, wanted to be a sacrifice for Isa. Alayhi. In better terms, it was a young man who accepted to sacrifice himself in order to save Isa's life. According to the Gospel of Barnabas, it was Judith. Who is Judith? Who He was the companion of Isa, السلام, who backstabbed him. He told Isa's enemies where Isa was. And as a punishment from God, subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah Azza wa Jal made them believe that Judith himself was Isa. So they took Judith and they crucified him. Long story short, bottom line is what? The bottom line is, it wasn't Isa who was crucified. Even then, some people during, um, during that time, 
or after Isa by Abit believed that he was killed. Salam Allah. Now, this doesn't mean that every single Christian had that belief. On the contrary, for Isa had successors. Salam Allah. The first of them was Simon Peter. The successors of Isa definitely knew the truth. The successors of Isa definitely knew that Isa wasn't crucified. Salam Allah. So we can uh, we can firmly say that not all Christians, even during Isa's time or after Isa's era, السلام, believed in the crucifixion. But so basically, when they lost the Bible, they came to their scholars. They needed help from the scholars. So what happened? The Imam says, فَقَالَ لَهُمْ أَلُوْقَ وَمَرْقَابُوسِ إِنَّ الْإِنْجِيلَ فِي صُدُورِنَا وَنَحْنُ نُخْرِجُهُ إِلَيْكُمْ سِفْرًا سِفْرًا فِي كُلِّ أَحَدٍ Here, Luke and Mark, they told the people, don't worry, we've memorized the Bible. We have it memorized. So, inshallah, we're going to uh, recite the Bible for you one chapter after the other every Sunday every Sunday we'll sit down and we'll recite the chapters of the Bible one chapter after the other so do not grieve and do not abandon the churches as in don't stop coming to the churches don't become you know uh, disbelievers Maintain your faith in Christianity. فَإِنَّا سَنَتْلُوهُ عَلَيْكُمْ فِي كُلِّ أَحَدٍ سِفْرًا سِفْرًا حَتَّى نَجْمَعَهُ كُلَّهُ They said, for certainly, we shall recite the Bible um, in front of you every Sunday. We'll recite all of its chapters, one chapter after the other, until we... Ensure that the whole Bible has been compiled. Then what happened? The Imam said, فَقَعَدَ أَلُوْقَ وَمَرْقَابُوسِ وَيُوحَنَّ وَمَتَّى فَوَضَعُوا لَكُمْ هَذَا الْإِنْجِيلِ بَعْدَ مَفْتَقَدْتُمُ الْإِنْجِيلَ الْأَوَّلِ The Imam said, at that point, O Jathliq, the four individuals, John, Luke, Mark, and Matthew, um, they came forth and they recited the Bible to the Christians. Because all four of them recited the Bible, each one was reciting what he knew from the Bible, what happened? The Bible turned into what? Four different Bibles. Four different Gospels. That's what happened. The question is, who are these people? Who were they? The Imam says, alayhi salam. He says, وَإِنَّمَا كَانَ هَؤُلَاءَ الْأَرْبَعَ تَلَامِيذ تَلَامِيذِ الْأَوَّلِينَ أَعَلِمْتَ ذَلِكَ The Imam tells him, these four people were the students of the students of the first generation of Christians. So these weren't people in the first generation. They weren't people who uh, met Isa, alayhi salam. They were the students of the students of what? Of the first generation of Christians. And when you look at the history of, of the Bible, when you do some research about this topic, Christians admit that none of the Gospels they have today were written during Isa's time, alayhi salam. None of the Gospels, whether we're talking about John or Luke or Mark or Matthew, all of those Gospels were written after Isa, alayhi salam, by an X amount of years, by an, by an amount of years. So these were who? Again, these were the students of the students of the first generation of Christians. The Imam tells him, Alim Now, do you know the truth behind the Bible and what happened when it was lost? The Jathlik said what? He said, أَمَّا هَذَا فَلَمْ أَعْلَمْهُ He told him, I did not know this issue. 
وقد علمته الآن but now I know it وبان لي من فضل علمك بالإنجيل and it is apparent to me that you have a good amount of knowledge regarding the Bible وسمعت أشياء مما علمته شهد قلبي أنها حق Look at this important word. He tells the Imam alayhi salam, I've heard the things you said. I've heard the things you said and I've witnessed part of what you know. And my heart, meaning my soul, has testified that what you said was true. Remember, Al-Jathliq didn't know what Imam Rida alayhi salam was mentioning. Previously, he had no knowledge regarding those specific events. Even then he tells the Imam, when you were talking, my heart was testifying that yes, what Ali Rida alayhi salam is saying is true. And that happens sometimes, subhanAllah. It happens when you hear haqq, when you hear a word of truth or multiple words of truth. Uh, sometimes you, you feel a sense of certainty. Telling you that these words are true. He tells the Imam السلام, because of you, because of your words, I was able to enhance my understanding to a great degree. Such are Ahlul Bayt. This is only a glimpse of their knowledge, and this is only a glimpse of how Sahib al-Zaman alayhi salam will, uh, will, will, you know, debate with uh, the Christians or the Jews or any individual who differs with him in faith after his reappearance. May we live to see those days when Sahib al-Zaman salam alayhi clarifies for the world that truth lies with Muhammad wa al Muhammad. And the rest of God's prophets and successors, Salamullahi alayhim. Do we have a question before we move, we move on? No. no. No, sir. No questions? Khosh? Jaid. Right. Going back to Adam, alayhi salam. Going back to Adam. We want to shed light today on uh on verse 36 of Surah Al-Baqarah. Um, why specifically this verse? Because it mentions how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala um, told Adam and Eve to descend from the garden. We've mentioned main incidents up until now regarding what happened in the garden. We've mentioned Adam's word in the garden, Adam's word out of the garden, meaning when he came to this world, how he repented. So now, uh, the last piece of the puzzle that we want to look at is uh, Allah's word subhanahu wa ta'ala regarding the descent of Adam and Eve, alayhim as -salam. So the verse says, فَأَزَلَّهُمَا الشَّيْطَانُ عَنْهَا فَأَخْرَجَهُمَا مِمَّا كَانَا فيه. But the shaitan made them both fall from it, meaning the garden, and caused them to depart from that state in which they were. We shed light on that part of the verse, so we don't need to repeat today. This is the new part that we need to understand. And we said, get forth. Some of you being the enemies of others, and there's for you in the earth an abode and a provision for a time. 
When we read this segment of the verse, um, multiple questions come to mind. Firstly, who is Allah addressing when he says, Ihbitu. بَعْضُكُمْ لِبَعْضٍ عَدُوٍ Come down. Some of you will be enemies to others. Or some of you are enemies to others. Who is he addressing? Here we have multiple opinions mentioned in the books of Tafsir. I'll share some opinions with you. For example, Sayyid Abdullah Shubbar Rahmatullah he mentions in his Tafsir that Allah Ta'ala was addressing Adam, Eve, alayhim as salam, shaytan, and the snake. The snake. What snake? This is the snake that shaytan used in order to hide from Adam alayhi salam and at the same time whisper to Adam salam Allah If you remember, we mentioned the tradition by Imam al-Askari salawatullahi wa salam alayhi. It's narrated that Imam al-Askari said shaytan al-rajim hid himself in the um, in, in in a snake, and particularly close to the snake's mouth or in its mouth, when it was talking, when he was talking to Adam, alayhi salam. So there was a snake present. Allah subhanahu wa taala says what He says that Adam, Eve, Iblis la'anahullah, and even the snake that Iblis used should come down from the garden. And go to where? Go to earth. This is one opinion. Based on this opinion, based on this opinion, when Allah says, some of you will be enemies to others, what He's saying is that. Adam and Eve alayhim salam and their progenies will be enemies to who? To a shaitan and his progeny and vice versa. Similarly, the snake, the snake and its progeny will be enemies to who? To Adam and Eve and their progeny alayhim salam As you know, um, snakes are quite dangerous, right? And they can kill you. Sometimes they attack you. So... Uh, the verse here, based on this opinion, when it says بَعْضُكُمْ لِبَعْضٍ adu, it is confirming that there is enmity between a shaitan, between the devil, and his progeny, and human beings. And it's also confirming that there is enmity between the snake and human beings. Or let's say snakes in general and human beings. A second opinion says that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was addressing shaitan Adam and Eve alayhim as salam. That's a second opinion. A third opinion says what? It says Allah ta'ala was addressing Adam and Eve only. So when he says ihbitu ba'dukum li ba'd adu, he's uh, only speaking to Adam and Eve salamu alayhim. Here the question is, but Adam and Eve are two people. They're two people. If you want to address two people and tell them come down, you, you'd say ihbita. Ihbita, not ihbitu. Ihbitu is a word used to address at least three people, three or more. So the answer is Allah Ta'ala, based on this opinion of course, Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Ta'ala is addressing Adam and Eve primarily and he's also addressing who? Their progenies. Because where are uh, the rest of mankind? Where is the rest of mankind? They're in Adam, alayhi salam. They're still in alam al-aslab. Alam al-aslab. Once Adam and Eve come down from their garden to earth, the sons and daughters of Adam will start emerging into, into existence in this world so we were all in adam 
عليه السلام in his soul in his soul hence Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was addressing all of us Adam, Eve and the progeny of Adam telling us come down go down from the garden to earth based on this opinion when Allah says بَعْضُكُمْ لِبَعْضٍ عَدُو what's he saying if he's only addressing human beings Adam, Eve, and their progenies. What's he saying? He's saying that some humans will be enemies to other humans. And that is also correct. That is also correct. Some of us follow the truth. Others follow what? Falsehood. And as a result, enmity is what? Created. The people of truth are enemies to the people of falsehood. And the people of falsehood are enemies to the people of truth. Of course, the people of truth aren't at fault. It's their duty to be enemies towards who? Towards the people of falsehood. But the people of falsehood, they're at fault. Because they're supposed to be following the path of truth. Take the example of Habil and Qabil. Who was at fault? Qabil. Da'natullahi alayhi. Habil alayhi salam. Is he an enemy to Qabil? Yes, on a day of judgment, he will be an enemy to Qabil. But this was because of what Qabil did. This was because of Qabil's envy and what his envy led to, which was murdering Habil, alayhi salam. Here we need to remember that the same applies to a shaitan regime. Shaitan is an enemy to us, yes? And we're also an enemy to him. But who's at fault? He's at fault. Adam السلام, essentially didn't do anything to Shaitan. It was a Shaitan regime who felt arrogant from day one and who envied Adam السلام, and as a result considered Adam and his progeny to be his enemies. We didn't do anything to him, right? We took him as an enemy because he took us as an enemy. And he tried to mislead us, tries to mislead us, and will continue trying to mislead us until his death. Alayhi so we're not at fault, rather he is at fault. Here, we remember a beautiful hadith by Imam al-Sadiq alayhi salatu wassalam regarding Banu Umayyah. The Imam, Salamullah uh, basically explains why Ahlul Bayt cannot be in agreement with Ali Abi Sufyan, the progeny of Abi Sufyan, who are basically from Banu Umayyah. Let me share the, tr the tradition with you. You can find it in the book Ma'ani Al Akhbar. Ma'ani Al Akhbar for Sheikh Al Saduq, Rahmatullahi Alayh. Just give me one second so I can send you the hadith. In Ma'ani al-Akhbar for Shaykh al-Saduq, rahmatullah there's a tradition going back to Imam al-Sadiq alayhi salam. He says, Inna wa abi sufyan ahlu baytayni ta'adayna fillah. He says, we and the household of Abi Sufyan's of, of Abi Sufyan's progeny, we are uh Afan, sorry. He says we and Abu Sufyan's progeny are two households that considered each household to be its enemy. Why? Fillah. He says, because of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The reason we consider them to be enemies. And the reason they consider us to be enemies is what? Our belief and their belief in Allah. He says, قُلْنَا صَدَقَ اللَّهِ وَقَالُوا كَذَبَ اللَّهِ We said Allah Ta'ala is truthful. What Allah says is, is the truth. And they said the exact opposite. They said Allah has lied. So we believed in Allah's message. They disbelieved in Allah's message. Hence, this enmity was created. So it's as if the Imam is telling you there is no way 
we can come to an agreement with Ali Abi Sufyan. There's no way we can become their friends unless they do what? Unless they change their belief and they say, Sadaq Allah. Allah has said the truth. From now on, we believe in Allah's message. Then the Imam said, قاتل أبو سفيان رسول الله صلى الله عليه وآله أبو سفيان فاط the messenger of Allah صلى الله عليه وآله وقاتل معاوية علي بن أبي طالب عليه السلام and معاوية فاط علي بن أبي طالب عليه السلام وقاتل يزيد من معاوية الحسين ابن علي عليه السلام and يزيد فاط حسين son of Ali peace be upon him والسفياني يقاتل القائمة عليه السلام and سفياني will fight Imam al-Mahdi, Azza Allah Ta'ala, Faraja. Sufyani, as you know, uh, or you may know, is a man called Uthman ibn Anbasa, who will be from Yazid bin Muawiyah's progeny. So he will be Umawi. What's interesting is what? The Imam says what? He says, Abu Sufyan fought Rasulullah. Imam uh, Muawiyah fought Imam Ali. Yazid fought Hussein. Uh, Sufyani will fight Imam al-Mahdi. From these sentences you understand that who was initially fighting who it was Banu Umayyah who were fighting Ahlul Bayt they're the ones who transgressed against Ahlul Bayt عليهم, due to Ahlul Bayt's beliefs السلام, and as a result Ahlul Bayt defended themselves Ahlul Bayt fought back So the transgression begins or began from Banu Umayyah. The same applies with Iblis. The transgression began from, from him. It began with him. He's the one who transgressed against Adam. Alayhi salam. We'll stop here for today, inshallah. And next week we'll continue with uh, verse 36 of Surah Al-Baqarah. And hopefully we'll take another verse. Walhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Wa sallallahu ala al-Mustafa Muhammadin. Wa alihi tayyibin al-Tahirin. Allahumma salli ala Muhammadin wa ali Muhammad wa ajil farajahum.